In this video, we're gonna go over the engage-disengage game. I'm here with my buddy, this is Marshall. He's a Dalmatian on TV, but in real life, he's actually a, a, a Australian Shepherd. And then we have Miss Layla here, and she's just an older dog. She's just gonna watch and make sure I have good technique. Now, basically, an engage-disengage game is a, a game that you can use if you have a dog that's reactive at people, skateboards, dogs, whatever it is. Um, and what you wanna do is we wanna create a, a positive association for the dog, first of all, looking at the thing, and after you practice a while, the dog learns that if I don't like something, I can look away from it and I'm gonna be rewarded for doing so. So in order to do this, we need, I know that you have good camera presence here, but I need you facing the other direction. So I'm gonna do a hand target and reposition you this way. There we go, so you're looking this way. Let's do that again. Come here, target, nice. It's right here. I know we've got a handful of treats. Okay, so if your dog wants to sit or lay down, it's fine. Uh, you want to make sure that the distance, the dog doesn't lunge at whatever the thing is or bark. If it's barking or reactive, you're too close. So you want to find a distance where you're close enough where the dog is paying attention to the stimulus. The stimulus in this case is one of the guardians going to be walking back and forth, um, but not so close that it feels threatened or where, where it is manifest by barking or lunging or snapping or wanting to move away. If your dog wants to move away, let him move away. You want to find a distance. I use as a test, can I get my dog to sit and will easily take a treat? If it won't do either one of those things the first time I say it, provided the dog knows how to sit and it likes the treats, that's an indication it's too uh, it's close, it's uncomfortable. All right, so I'm gonna ask you for a sit and up actually, there we go. All right, so our guardian now is gonna go ahead and the marker word we're gonna be using is nice. Now you can do this with a clicker and since he actually knows a clicker, it's a little bit more distinct, I'll use a clicker for this one. So I'm clicking when he looks at his guardian. And then when he, I do that, it's gonna cause him to turn and look away and look at me and I'm gonna give him a treat for doing this. All right, I'm gonna have the guardian go ahead and walk to the, uh, wait, let's do this. Get you down there, there you go. All right, I'm gonna have the guardian walk to the doorway. Nice, whoops, I used both of them. I'm just gonna use a clicker. All right, sit. Yeah, you're making this a little bit more challenging, sweetheart. There you go. When you're doing this, I would recommend just having one dog so you're not practicing with multiples. And we wanna have the dog facing in that direction. All right, go ahead and walk back to the mini stove. Go ahead and walk back. I'm gonna have you just walk back and forth now. So I'm clicking for looking at him. So you wanna do this until the dog's looking pretty easily. Now, this, I'm not gonna be able to do it enough to show you here, so I'm gonna kind of explain. So the next stage would be, uh, well actually, we'll see if we can do one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reward for the next look. So after you've been doing this well, now I'm gonna wait for him to go ahead and keep doing it. One, two, three. Now I'm clicking for looking away from him. Now this is a very compressed, and you can stop. This is a very compressed uh, time frame. This is normally not how fast you would do it. So what you would do is find, you have this area here, now it might be too close to your house, there's a little playground behind the house. If that's the case, then you can do this with kids, you can do it with bicycles, you can do it with other dogs. Pick one at a time. If we're working with kids, fine. And it'd be better if you could find one kid. So as you notice, I was telling him when to start, when to stop, that's the ideal situation. And if it's, uh, if it's human, one of the things I found that works great is have the earbuds in and have them on the earbuds so I can be talking to them and my hands are free. Mm. Um, so basically, uh, the first stage is, again, we want the dog to look at the person. It's the instant they look, we click, then the dog turns away to get that treat and I deliver the treat. And you keep on doing that until eventually the dog looks and we wait one, two, three, four, five. If it doesn't look, then I might say the name or blow at the dog. I can't do it with a mask and the dog looks at me, then I would click. And I'm rewarding for the dog for now disengaging. Now the, st the steps for this is I usually do, um, let's say that we're 50 yards away from the stimulus. That's where he feels comfortable and I can get him to sit and take the treat. We practice this there to the point where we get the where he's starting to disengage. Then I would next time, and these practice sessions should be short. Maybe, you know, you could probably, it depends on how active the thing is, but if you have somebody that's under control, I'd keep it to like three or four minutes. Don't try to shove a whole bunch of it in there because you'll start failing at the end and then your work is really not very valuable. So do it for you know a couple of minutes and then basically uh, leave and take it for a little walk. If you wanna come back, have the person take a quick break, walk the dog for five minutes, come, uh, give it a drink of water, let it sit, then come back and do the game again. Maybe you do that two or three times. So you, each one is three minutes and you do three of them over the course of 25, 30 minutes. So the dog gets a good 15 minutes or 10 minutes of work of doing it. The next time I did it, I would go to 48 yards 
like, you know, and it's not a hard and rest rule. Sometimes I go three, five, seven, but if I take that step and he can't sit or look at the person uh, or take the treat while the person's appear around, he's close to his breaking point. Lunging and reacting means we push, we get greedy, we push way too far. The idea for this is to go be conservative, go very slow mm -hmm. and steady and build one success on top of another success. And the last repetition is one of the most important ones because that's what they're gonna have the freshest memory engram, that's the brightest memory, that's what they're gonna recall. So if you push too far and last repetition is a bad one or you get frustrated because the dog is no longer performing, the dog's like, I don't wanna play disengage, engage, or engage, disengage, you got mad last time. So end on a high note and whenever possible, do something your dog really likes. You know, oh, rub the belly if your mm -hmm. dog likes that. Scratch them behind the ears, on their butts, uh, play ball, let them tug, whatever their favorite thing is. So at the conclusion of it, we do something I really, really like. So it's even more of a reason to want to do the activity. This is something that takes practice and a lot of prog uh, uh, a lot of repetitions, but it's pretty easy. Uh, since you have that field, I would try to do it there unless you can't get a distance that's enough. And there is always a distance. Some people think you can't, but there's always a distance. But because this is clo so close, the distance might be more compacted because it's kind of territorial outside your house. So find another park that's nearby. And we're, okay, we're gonna go to this park and work on kids. We're gonna go to this park and work on bicycles. We're gonna go to this park and work on uh, dogs or whatever it is. And the idea is to find like a path. People will be walking their dogs on that path. Like I talked about, 4.30 to 6 o'clock is usually prime time for people to walk their dogs. So if you can go there, we set them up for success. We exercise them first. We give them 10 minutes to rest. We make sure that there's not any lawnmowers being going. No babies are crying. No trucks are beeping, making beeping sounds as they back up. If any of those things are going on, stop the exercise. It's hard enough to get a dog not to do it. Don't make it harder by having contributing factors that are working against you. Um, so we exercise and set them up for success, success. The environment's good. We practice three or four minutes. Then after that, we uh, walk him a little bit, let him reset, come back, do three minutes, walk again, reset, come back, do it in three minutes, and then we do the belly rubs or whatever it is he really likes to do. We say thank you to our friend, they walk away. Um, we'd also like to, um, when you're doing this, he's reactive really to everyone, but you might notice, I just worked with a dog named the boy, and I had one of our staffers who's female come with me to help. Dog didn't care about her. He's reactive to males. We mm -hmm. They didn't know that. So you might notice their physical characteristics, people with beards. Uh, people are a little bit too big because of corona. People who are walking really fast, kids that are very loud. There's nothing wrong with any of those, but make a mental list. These are the things that the the the, the triggers that he is uh, the things that trigger him. Triggers that trigger, and then pra systematically practice those things till eventually you get to the point where the person is walking by right here and he's like looks and, or looks away because that's what gets me the treat. Mm -hmm. Sit. That's not a sit though. There you go. Come here, little Layla. Sit. This is Layla. This is Marshall. This is how you can play the engage-disengage game.